Bring once again, it's a pleasure being here with you and having these discussions about, about people, about uh, the specific topic of parental alienation. Mm -hmm. And last week we spoke about the healing that comes with, let's say, uh, a child has become an adult and they want to heal. Mm -hmm. Although, yes, you can have the young children as well trying to heal, but let's say the child has become independent somewhat from their mm -hmm. controlling parent mm -hmm. and they are trying to heal. Now, let's say now that this child approaches the parent that was alienated mm -hmm. and what do you think or how should the alienated parent mm -hmm. should approach the scenario of healing mm -hmm. with their child. Mm -hmm. Now, bear in mind, we have two scenarios. We have a child that might have anger and hate mm -hmm. towards the alienated parent for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And we have the child that is seeking forgiveness probably or to establish a relationship. Mm -hmm. So if we could, could we have, well, a look at both scenarios, then mm -hmm. how should the parent encourage healing? Nice. So, Let's take a look at the child who is seeking to re-establish a relationship with his parent whom he was alienated from. So in this scenario, if you really take a look, here there are two people who most probably have been waiting for years to meet each other, to see each other, no? to have a real bond with each other. And yet there is a saying, the longer you wait, as the time is approaching closer and closer, it's like there is an emotion that someday I'm going to meet him. We are going to meet soon. We are going to meet soon. So there is like, a, it's like this, you know, expectation that yes, we are going to meet. So in the minds of these two people, what is happening? Here, father is thinking, I cannot wait to meet my son or my daughter. And here the child is also saying, I cannot wait to meet my father. So there is this, what you can, like a surge hmm, of love on both sides, waiting to meet each other. And so when they really meet, the love, the bond of love is such, or could be such. There's always a, there's pros and cons, that they bond in such a way that, you know, you they hug, that there is no letting go like. Mm -hmm. So both feel that, you know, that I want to spend the rest of my time with you. And uh, for us, I understand that one of the main aspect, even though forgiveness, by forgiving, you also heal. But love also heals. And so these two people now seeing each other after who knows how many years, they bond in a strong kind of love that naturally they are able to heal all their past. And if there is true love in the relationship means if the child knew, knows that this parent was not wrong, but was wronged, if you understand what I mean. He is not wrong, but he is the one who was wrong, which means like he was the one who was blamed, etc., and was not allowed to see the child. He may or may not be the cause of the alien alienating. He may or may not be. But whatever it is, the child still has love for the parent child will still have love. Sometimes a father is a criminal, but the child still loves the father. That's my father no matter what. And every child loves their father, or even their mother, even though they are the biggest criminal. They love their father or their mother, because that is theirs. And so there is a bond. There is that kind of love between these two individuals that no one cannot break. 
And yes, if this individual, this child who is now an adult, is allowed to spend time with this alienated parent, they could mend back the relationship. And they could heal back that relationship. The child will forgive the father anyway. And here the father, with all the immense love he has for the child, will want to spend all the time. And so that kind of love and bonding alone is a form of healing. So yes, love heals. But let's say this child who was not able to forgive the parent, either parent, both parent. So he's living in this kind of a bitterness for his whole life. This is how my parents were. Don't want to see none of them. You hear children saying like that, you know. And they will go away, leave their parents. They don't even want to see their parents anymore. Means that individual is living in a kind of a bitterness inside. He's living a life that he says for himself, it's better I don't live. What kind of life is this to live? Nobody loves me. No one around me know what love is. And there are individuals who live like this. And sometimes it could lead to even serious consequences. Where a child who doesn't feel loved, who doesn't feel belonged, who doesn't feel cared for or appreciated or accepted, they go and they, they can go and destroy their own lives. So there are many reasons, so many reasons why this aspect or this topic of parental alienation should be a serious topic for every parent. Every parent, before becoming a parent, should understand this lesson of parental alienation and understand the damages it can do to a child. Because the damage is not only a damage for a day or a week or a year. You're talking about a lifelong damage. You're talking about damaging not only that child, but all those who will be in connection with him. Let's say he is damaged. He never get the love, he never get the happiness, that attention, care that he needs as a child. He will grow up always wanting it and expecting it. And once he does not get what he wants, he will always be angry, always be aggressive. Children who do not receive that love and care and attention, you would find that these children are more violent. They are suffering with a lot of negative emotions. And then it's difficult to heal. Sometimes even in the schools you find children with these kinds of temperament. Difficult to control them because they have aggressive nature. Where did that come from? No baby is born aggressive. No baby is born, let's say, peaceless or unhappy. They're all born in a calm way. But at some point along the line, they start developing these characters and these personalities. And it all has to do with the environment they're growing up in. So learning parenting is so important. I believe and I recommend that each couple who are planning to have children or set up a family, they should learn how to treat, how to grow children, how to bring up a child and plan properly before you have your child. Are you really, are you really ready to have a child? Are both partners really ready? to take care of an individual who they are bringing. And so I think this program 
is not only a beautiful program, but I think it is a necessity. More important, more than important, it is a necessity. And this should reach not only the schools, every home. And if it could be taught in school, it's fine also. Hmm? Because here you are preparing minds. This program is helping to prepare minds. And for us to understand you know, how our mind, how our thoughts can have effect on other minds. Hmm? And so it is important, it is necessary to create such programs that could help in the healing process. So here we were talking about this alienated parent bonding with a child whom he have never seen for a long time. Uh, if a child is, hmm, is not, has not understood that it is not only the fault of that alienated parent, then he will not be angry with the alienated parent. But if he feels that it is because of him, he was not able to have a relationship with the mother or the father, then yes, he will grow up with a lot of anger. Because now he will be blaming that parent. You are the reason why I am like this today. This is what the parent, the children tell their parents after, you know, when the life is broken, they don't have an aim, they don't have a proper life ahead. They start blaming their parents for everything. And because of you, I am like this. If you did not do that, I would have not been like this today. And so sometimes parents have to take all the blame for how the child grew up. And yes, children do blame their parents. Sometimes in a positive way and a negative way also. Do you think parents are to blame? On, as your own in, yes, of course. Parents, because a parent, how a parent bring up a child, that is how the child will grow. And if a child does not grow to be the way they should be in society, which means obedient, with the good values, the positive values, then who is responsible? The parents, both parents. And I will never say that you should just blame one parent, but always two. Because let's say one parent does not have the ability to really um, guide a child or educated the child in the right way. What about the other parent? Hmm. So it's always two. You need two parents to grow a child, not only one. And so yes, children also grow up with grievances and then they will tell the other one, no, you never allow me to see my father or you never allow me to see my mother. And you know, after some time, when these children get adult, they could turn their back on that parent who did not allow them to see the other parent. They could turn their back on them, leave them for good. So there's a lot of disadvantages not allowing your child to see your spouse or ex, as you say it. So careful thinking is so important, it's necessary. Making the right decisions, very necessary. Mm -hmm. knowing what to say, when to say. Mm -hmm. But to me, an intelligent individual will never, an intelligent individual will never stop his or her child from seeing the other parent, never. Even if that other parent is not a good parent. Why? The child will still look up to that parent even if he's an alcoholic or even if he's a, a what, whatever it is, that is still my father. Because the love, the care, the affection that a parent can give to a child, no one else can give it. Everyone else could pretend to give it, but it would not be real. 
it will be to a certain extent. Mm. To totally love someone else's child as your own will not be possible. Because you cannot say, this is my child. Or you can even say it. But deep down, you know it's not. <laughs> but when it's your child, yours is yours no matter what. You can kill for your child. Mm? That is a love and a bonding that exists between a child and a parent. Now, we have two scenarios. And <coughs> firstly, the parent who is approached by a loving child, where should that focus the parent? Mm -hmm. Where should their focus be on trying to, let's say, re-establish a past lost childhood <coughs> uh, the, where the, the, this is an mm -hmm. adult, mm -hmm. but you are trying to, to make up time? Mm -hmm. Or should the focus be on the future? Mm -hmm. So it means as once it's a loving child, it simply shows that this child is not suffering much. Because if you're suffering, you will not be loving. You'll be bitter, you'll be angry, you'll be totally the opposite. So if it's a loving child, a child that, okay, forgive the father or the mother, whatever it may be. And um, here they are bonding again. I think a mature, loving, mature child will not want to spend time in just trying to make up the lost times. But they will think about moving ahead, going forward. Maybe the little bit of healing will be necessary. They spend a little time together. But a mature individual will always think about the next step. So not all children are the same. Sometimes you can have a very mature child in your home. Mature means they're able to understand situations. A mature child will know if their mother or their father is suffering from other issues. And they will know until what point mm, they should be of help to the parent. And of help means not create more problems or more issues, but instead try to help the situation when a child is mature. They try to help the situation. Nowadays, you see even little children. I have seen in you know, these Facebook videos they are trying to tell the mother or the father how to live with the, with the next, uh, with their spouse. You have to start to love him. Hmm? You have to forgive him. And only when you forgive him, you heal. I have seen a little child, the girl maybe just four, not even five years old. And she had that intelligence to tell the mother that you have to change your habit, your attitude, so that my father will stay with you. It was so touching. Yeah. So they have, there are children who can understand what is happening to their parents. And once they understand, they realize, of course, not to blame none. They all are suffering with some other issues. They come together with their issues. And here, this is the result of the issues, if you understand what I mean. So even before a couple get married, they may be having issues, separate issues. But yet still they choose to come together. They come, they form a family, or well, a couple first, and then they will have a family. And if they were having issues first, here they produce this new one with issues. But couples that did not have issues and problems in their relationships will produce children that are mature and easy thinkers, fast thinkers, deep thinkers. We are dealing with a child who is upset and angry and who we knows may be aggressive with the parent who had alienated him from the other parent. Now, when he bond with the other parent now, I think the, what is expected of that parent is to help this child to heal. 
understand that the reason why this child is upset and angry and aggressive is because he is suffering. And if he is suffering, he needs help. And if the parent could help, of course, in whatever way, this is what this child needs. And boiling down to the same, the same topic, this, now, this parent now should give this child a lot of love, a lot of attention, a lot of care, to bring him back, to bring him out of that hole that he is in, if you want to call it that. Because in this aggressive mood, always violent, always speaking out harshly and roughly, and you're bitter inside. It shows that you are bitter. And that kind of personality and that kind of behavior definitely needs attention. Because if you don't give attention to such behavior, it could get worse. And worse means even children in that kind of state of mind could even be violent, physically violent, to a parent. You hear stories of, okay, a son hit the father, killed the father because he hit the mother. You hear such stories. This is how it could, you know, it could um, grow into if it is not taken care of. And so, yes, this parent has a duty to take care of this child, this child's mind from the very beginning before it gets worse. So it is very important. So now we take some time for reflection. <coughs> As I sit here in this calm and quiet state of mind, I reflect on myself for the next few minutes. I'm just going to think about me. I'm going to take a look at my inner state of mind. Am I holding any grievances inside? Do I have thoughts of violence within me? Am I aggressive in the way I think, speak and act? And if I am suffering, in any of these ways, I should understand that I need help. And the help I need is to heal myself. Anger is not natural. Violence is not natural. Aggression is not natural. It is not the natural qualities of any sane human being. I use this reflection to take a deep look at myself and see where am I. A single thought of anger is damaging to me. If there is any thoughts of anger, any thoughts of violence, or any aggressive thoughts in me, I take this time to let it go. I take time to heal it. And I just allow myself to heal. I come out of any grievances that I am carrying in my mind because those grievances will not help me. 
anger will not solve my problem. Violence will not solve my problem. And being aggressive will not solve any problem. Sampex Limited, networking societies for a better future.